Hi, I'm Jeff Brink with Blackout Lighting Console, and I don't know about you, but I've been seeing all of these new lights come out with DMX smoothing options, which is not something we really had before, and it's becoming critical to set in your lights. Maybe you tried turning smoothing on like I did after seeing it for the first time and then had to kill the light instantly on a cue, but when you turn the light off, it had a fade to it. Jeff, I said I wanted it instantly. You swore it would never happen again. So now you turn it off everywhere like I did for some time. But there's obviously more to DMX smoothing than just trying to trip you up. In some situations, it's critical to turn on. So let's dive into what this setting is all about. DMX smoothing is simply a way for lights to take the incoming DMX frames and create a smoother transition with what the light is capable of doing. If you watched my last video on strobing, the max DMX rate although technically is 44 hertz, is limited by your console or hardware. Grand MA's max DMX output is 30 hertz, or 30 times a second, which I am still floored by. How is the entire MA community not up in arms about this? And I love this console too, because there's just so much you can do with it. But are you insane? You're slowing down the DMX output to 68% of its capacity. And DMX is already slow. And you're one of the most popular consoles. What is wrong with you? So let's say you're sending DMX at 30 Hertz. That means you can send 30 steps to a light every second. If you wanted to dim a light from 100% down to 10% in one second, each step would be a 3% drop. Now, regardless of that being 8-bit or 16-bit, that is 3% of the light's intensity. That's going to stutter as you fade the light out, and it's going to look awful. And if you're either on Wi-Fi to your gateway or using a wireless protocol to receivers in your lights, and you hit some interference, maybe you miss one frame. So now you send 100, then oops, you lost 97. So now you send it 94. That's a 6% drop now instead of 3%. That is definitely going to cause a jump throughout your fade. This is where DMX smoothing comes in. Depending on the smoothing setting, this vortex will either take two frames or five frames at a time and figure out the slope between them. It will then use that slope to transition its actual dimmer smoothly from value to value that it is receiving, or in our case, 100% to 97% in that first step. The dimmers and LEDs are a lot more advanced today than they used to be. So the vortex can actually fill in the gap with a lot more steps smoothing out the transition, even though you only gave it a value of 100 and then 97. Now, I don't know exactly how many steps it can fill in because Cream Source wouldn't disclose that to me, but considering the Vortex can do frame sync up to 5,000 FPS, I would say it's probably a significant amount more than the max DMX of 44 Hertz. Now, because the light has to do the calculation ahead of time, it's going to be two frames or five frames in the case of super smooth mode behind what you are actually sending it from the console. So in smooth mode, it gets frames one and two, finds the slope, and then on frame three starts the transition. This only really becomes a problem if you were to kill the light or turn it on instantly because it's going to be two frames behind. It's going to be hard to tell on video since I'm running at, you know, 24 FPS, but there is a noticeable difference in the snappiness with smoothing off. It feels really responsive and I love that, but at the cost of what? A smooth dim? What if we need to run this light on a cue really close to the actor and the light has to fade up incredibly smoothly so that we don't notice it turn on in camera? No smoothing option is definitely not what you want and smooth might be fine, but super smooth would be the most ideal because it's going to create the smoothest transition since it has more frames to do it in, five versus two or zero. And the coolest thing about the Vortex is that they allow you to change the DMX smoothing from their control channel instantly. I had this light in no smoothing, I trigger super smooth, and now when I run a fade from zero to 100% in one second, it looks like butter. Now, if you're keeping up here, you're starting to realize how much this is to manage and what lights have what capabilities that you now have to configure per shot. That's a bit daunting of a task. It's no longer we have to get our crew to program the light into the correct configuration for the shoot, and sometimes they can hardly do that. It's now, 
do we need to change any of the settings before we bring this light out to play for this scene? It's a lot. And this is why we should get paid the big bucks. It's all about managing data incredibly well so that you have a seamless workflow on set. And that is something you can spend an entire career figuring out. Before I wrap this up, there should be one question you're wondering, and that is, well, if I have smoothing on, do I even need 16-bit control at that point? Because the light is just going to interpolate the values in between the steps I'm sending, so what difference does that make? And you'd be right, to a degree. Back to my MA example, at 30 hertz, you would be able to send a different value every frame of DMX for eight and a half seconds. Because on an 8-bit channel, from 0 to 255, is 256 steps. So 256 divided by 30 is 8.5 seconds. So basically, if you aren't doing a transition longer than 8.5 seconds, which means it would surpass your 256 steps, and now you'd be repeating values, then you don't really need 16-bit. But we're talking film here, and things change on a dime. What if you need to do a 10 point fade over 10 seconds? If you did that in 8-bit, that's 1% every second, meaning you would constantly be sending many of the same DMX values until it dropped to the next value. So even with DMX smoothing on, it would probably look choppy. If you did this in 16-bit, you would be changing values every step and it would look smoother. Plus, what if you need to be in between an 8-bit step, like pan, tilt, or hue, which are all in degrees. 360 degrees is more steps than an 8-bit channel, so anything like that should definitely be in 16-bit. XY? XY has to be in 16-bit. There are 8,000 values of X and 8,000 values of Y. I don't even understand how manufacturers implement 8-bit XY channels, which is why I've taken a hard stance against adding them in blackout unless it's part of some ultimate mode and there's just no way around it. If you're using an XY 8-bit profile, stop. Please, just stop, you're killing me. I'm sorry, but like, you're just completely missing the point of XY, and that's a video for another day. Listen, if you want my advice, turn smoothing on until you have to turn it off. I personally think two frames is very responsive and seems snappy enough, yet allows for a smoother dim, and that's what I would strive to go for. If you're pixel mapping or need an instant kill cue, go ahead and turn smoothing off. Anything more than that though, like three or five frames of smoothing, like some manufacturers insist on as a default, tough call. I would probably turn it off because I could only see myself using that in very unique circumstances as it feels too slow to me. And if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of a control freak. I mean, I'm making my own console. What do you expect? Find out what your favorite fixtures DMX smoothing options are and post it in the comments below. I'm interested to see what everyone's preferences are. And if you like this video, give me a like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.